And today we want to continue dealing with the mergers and acquisition. So we want to look at mergers and acquisition. It's just a continuation, is a continuation from what we did last time. In our previous session, we discussed what mergers is and what an acquisition is. Well, it was a very good discussion. And uh, if you, you also remember, we said a merger is where two or more companies join together to form a big company, one new company, and the identity will be lost. While an acquisition, one company known as the predator takes over the business of another known as the target. Now, on that note, we can even relate as far as family issues are concerned, for example, in real life situation, in social life, if, uh, if uh, somebody marries another, what does that one will be? I know some of you say it's a merger or an acquisition. A merger whereby two have joined together to form one. Well, some will argue that it's an acquisition. That since an acquisition, the target loses identity then it means the husband or the man-to-be will acquire the sister and in the process the sister will lose identity. When the sister loses identity, they will definitely use the identity of the man, of the brother. Just on a light note, don't take it personal. Just on a light note, on just trying to relate this in real life situation. It's very important. It's also good to know how we can relate these studies in our real life situation. Now, we went further and talked about uh, even the benefits, the types of mergers, the benefits of mergers. Uh, we looked at hostile, uh, you know, takeover and the defense, take, uh, you know, uh, uh, indicators or prediction of a hostile takeover. We also looked at the defense tactics that we can use to avoid a hostile takeover. We looked at mergers and merger analysis, and uh, we further looked at some of the impact of, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the the contribution of other stakeholders in merger and acquisition, especially the bankers. Then we looked at why reasons or why mergers fail in the recent past. Now today we want to look at mainly the evaluation part of the merger analysis. We have. Uh, we are planning, screening, and searching, and we have also financial evaluation. We we'll also want to go further on this evaluation of mergers. So today we want to look at the evaluation, evaluation of mergers. Evaluation of mergers and acquisition. Evaluation of mergers and acquisition. So that's what we want to discuss today. Evaluation of mergers and acquisition. Now, it should be known that immediately after merger, so after merger, after a merger, after a merger, or an acquisition, or an acquisition, a company will be expected to compute the post acquisition earnings. So, the main analysis or the main evaluation after a merger or an acquisition, the earnings per share, the earnings per share, the earnings per share may increase, may increase or reduce, or rather we say decrease. So how do we compute our earnings per share? So our earnings per share, our earnings Per share, our earnings per share, this is earnings per share. We normally compute earnings per share by taking the total earnings, earnings, you divide it by number of ordinary shares. That's how we compute the earnings per share. And uh, we can also take the earnings per share you divide it by the earnings, the, sorry, the earnings divided by the earnings per share to get the number of ordinary shares. 
number of ordinary shares can be the earnings you can take the earnings you divide it by the earnings per per share that's not our concern that's not our main concern our main concern will be what will be the earnings after acquisition what will be the earnings after acquisition so post acquisition post acquisition earnings per share how do we calculate it post acquisition earnings per share you take the combined the combined earnings the combined earnings of predator or predator and the target and the target or we can say not only the uh, earnings per share not only the earnings of the predator and the target but also the earnings of the merge of the merged companies of the two companies that are merged then we divide it by we divide it by that by number of ordinary shares number of ordinary shares in the predator in the predator in the predator then we add the number of new shares new shares new shares to acquire to acquire the target to acquire the target very important there the earnings of the predator plus the earnings of the target or the earnings of the companies that have merged then we also have the number of ordinary shares as we said how we get the number of ordinary shares number of ordinary shares we said you can take the earnings the earnings you divide by the earnings per share or number of ordinary shares number of ordinary shares you can take the market value the market value of ordinary shares you divide it by the market price the market price per share the mps market price per share to get the number of ordinary shares so number of ordinary shares can be earnings over earnings per share total earnings that is and also uh, market value of ordinary shares divided by the market price per share then how do we get uh, the you know the earnings uh, let me look at this first the number of number of new shares number of new shares to acquire to acquire to acquire the target number of new shares to acquire the target we simply take the exchange ratio the exchange ratio exchange ratio you multiply by the number of shares number of shares in the target company in the target company how do we also compute the exchange ratio there's another issue exchange ratio exchange ratio that would dilute yeah this is just the general exchange ratio let me say general or the typical computation of an exchange ratio we take the offer price by the predator if not given that is then you divide it by the market price of the predator so you need to remember that even that formula can be used for and the other way around you can use that formula to calculate the market price per share of the predator then sometimes we are not given the exchange ratio so this is how we calculate it or sometimes we are told to calculate the exchange ratio that will not dilute that will not dilute the earnings per share of the predator so we can also calculate non diluting non diluting exchange ratio non diluting exchange ratio here friends you will take the non diluting the non diluting offer price you divide it by the 
uh, uh, market price per share of the predator. So the issue is how do you get the non-diluting? Non-diluting offer price. How do you get the non-diluting offer price? The non-diluting offer price will be the price earnings ratio, the price and ratio of the predator. The price and ratio of the predator, you multiply by the earnings per share of the target of the target. How do we get the price earnings ratio? Price and ratio, whether it's for a predator or for the target, price and ratio is simply the market price per share over the earnings per share or the market value, the market value of ordinary shares over total earnings. So you can use that to get the price and ratio. And that formula of the price and ratio can still be used to determine the market price per share. Can also be used to determine the earnings per share. That's just making one of them the subject of the formula. We can make the market price per share the subject of the formula, or we can use the earnings per share the subject of the formula. The same story, we can use the market value of owner shares the subject of the formula. We can also use the total earnings as the subject of the formula. That is the non-diluting offer price. But we may also have an offer price, right? Uh, we may also have an exchange ratio, an exchange ratio, an exchange ratio, acceptable, acceptable, acceptable by, by target shareholders. So this is the non-diluting offer price, the non-diluting exchange ratio, acceptable. We can even say this is acceptable is acceptable by predator, by predator shareholders. So it's acceptable. Non-diluting exchange ratio acceptable by predator shareholders. This one will be non-exchange ratio acceptable by target shareholders. How do we go about it? We simply bring in market price of the target, market price of the target, I multiply by number of number of shares in the predator, number of shares in the predator company. Then I divide that by the market, uh, the offer price, offer price, offer price of uh, by let me say the offer price by predator. Then you subtract the market value, the market value of target ordinary shares. So that's important. And how do we calculate the offer price? Very important to be known. The offer price of predator will be, the offer price will be the price and ratio or predator or after acquisition after acquisition then we multiply that by the combined earnings combined earnings now friends you need to know that there at that point we are not talking about earnings per share but it's simply combined earnings the total combined earnings so that is how to compute the exchange ratio. But we also need to remember one more item that we need to do is to determine the premium. The premium on acquisition. The premium on acquisition. The premium on acquisition will be the offer price. Offer price minus the market price per share of the target. Of the target. So we need to determine the offer price or the premium per share. That would be the difference between the offer price 
and the market price per share of the target. Mainly, friends, this is one of the main computations that we'll be doing. And as you have seen, the, we have simply started with the post-acquisition earnings per share. And you'll uh, be asked maybe the exchange ratio, if you're not given the exchange ratio. And you'll also be required to identify the premium. Mainly those are the items. The rest are secondary that you cannot do the rest if you don't have, uh, if uh, you have not been requested the post-acquisition earnings per share. But we can also take it into another level that even this one can be requested. You mostly at some point also requested to do that. So those are the main items that will be required, the post-acquisition earnings per share, the exchange ratio, the non-diluting and uh, the dilute non-diluting or acceptable exchange ratio by the target shareholders. If you remember that, then the rest are just subsidiary of what you may be expected to remember. <music>